morning everyone and welcome back to Perry High School for the 2020-21 school year. As principal, I'm happy to welcome each of you back to the building. For the past several years, we would have individual grade level assemblies to speak with everyone about changes, review the policies or procedures, and simply have a chance for some staff members to introduce themselves. Just to make sure everyone is aware, this obviously isn't going to be the case this year. I'm going to say this in advance. You're not going to like some of the new procedures that are in place. After many summer discussions, we needed to make some very difficult decisions, decisions that even we as adults struggled to initially accept. These decisions that we made changed what we've always done and in the midst of a global pandemic needed to happen. However, when we made them, everyone's health and safety was at the center of our thoughts. Let's be honest, we're in unprecedented times, challenging times, uncomfortable times. These are the moments that will test each of us and how we all respond will eventually lead to our safety and success. This morning, you're going to hear from others who will go over specific changes, the bell schedule, face coverings, social distancing, breakfast and lunch procedures, hygiene etiquette, the cell phone policy, electronic hall pass programs, directional staircases, just to name a few. How, again, all of these decisions were made to do our best to help us keep our school doors open and for the wonderful staff at PHS to teach and help us in every way possible. You may be watching this video right now and thinking to yourself, hey, Mr. Mr. Riley is talking about all of these safety and health procedures that are in place, and he's not even wearing a face covering, which is the number one essential precaution that can be used. If you notice this, then great job. Actually, this version of me was recorded prior to the school year getting underway. I'm, I'm the only one in the PHS recording studio at the moment, and no one is anywhere around. When you see me in the building, it'll be masks on, as I talk with students, staff, and families for the foreseeable future. Yes, wearing a face covering is difficult. I completely get it. However, for your health, my health, and the health of everyone else in the building, I'm prepared for some uncomfortableness if it'll help each of you. The same is expected from everyone at PHS. We're all in this together. These challenging times where compassion, support, and kindness are consistently needed. Many of the procedures and guidelines that you will hear shortly need some key ingredient to be successful. They need each of you every minute of every day. When putting any new plan into place, there is an awful lot of trust that is needed. I have confidence and faith that each of you will be able to follow these guidelines. The downside of not doing so may very well mean that, that someone's health may be in jeopardy. As principal, I'm counting on each one of you to do your part, to show the compassion and kindness that is needed at these difficult times. At Perry High School, all of our students are leaders. You lead our school and district through thoughtfulness, acts of kindness, and feelings of compassion. I'm ready to embrace the challenges that lie ahead and look forward to each of you rising up to do your part and joining me with your resilient leadership. Thanks for understanding. Good morning, Perry High School. Welcome back, students. Today I'm going to go over a few uh, procedures and protocols that are going to be a little bit different this year so we can make this as smooth a transition as possible. So, to start off, student arrival and dismissal procedures. The arrival process. Students will ha have three different points of entry to Perry High School for this academic year. Students who utilize transportation from the school buses will be dropped off at either the main lobby doors or doors 16, 17, and 18. Students who drive to school or who are dropped off by their parent or guardian will enter through the athletic lobby. Students will be permitted to go to their locker and then expected to go directly to their first mod class. Students will not be permitted to walk around the building at their leisure. This is done to support our collective efforts with respect to social distancing guidelines. Dismissal process for at the end of the day. Students will have again three points of dismissal from Perry High School for this year. Again, students who utilize transportation, school transportation will utilize the main lobby doors 
as well as doors 16, 17, and 18. Students who drive to school or who are being picked up by their parent or guardian will exit through the athletic lobby. At the close of school, students will be dismissed through a gradual release model. Students, when released from school, should go directly to their locker, gather their materials needed, and exit the building. There will also be different procedures for breakfast and lunch this year. At breakfast, students who elect to eat breakfast provided by the Perry High School cafeteria program will receive a grab-and-go breakfast to be eaten in their assigned first mod classes before class starts. Students will enter the cafeteria adhering to the floor spacers and the established cafeteria procedures to ensure social distancing practices. At lunch, students will enter the cafeteria adhering to the floor spacers and the established cafeteria procedures to ensure, ensure social distancing practices. Following the purchase of lunch, students will eat in the cafeteria or the auxiliary gym. Students will be expected to remain seated at their table until dismissal at the conclusion of the lunch mod. Four markings will be used to reflect social distancing practices while moving through the six, six cafeteria lunch lines and work with the ca cafeteria staff to ensure appropriate social distancing. Four markings and directional arrows were used to indicate specific entrances for students to enter and exit the auxiliary gym. Signs will be posted in each of these locations to remind students of hand washing, sanitizing procedures, and social distancing guidelines. While the Perry Local School District has reopened its schools to students, the global COVID-19 pandemic continues. Schools are places where diseases like COVID-19 can quickly spread given the number of students, teachers, and others who often come into close contact with one another. For the safety of our student body and community, all Perry Local School District staff and students in grades K-12 are required to wear multi-layered cloth face coverings at all times while at school or on school buses. Face coverings must comply with their dress code and must not contain profanity or other prohibited images or material. Failure by students to comply with this policy may result in discipline under the Student Code of Conduct. Furthermore, outright refusal by a student to wear a face covering will result in the student being enrolled in the Perry Virtual Learning Academy. COVID-19 is a highly contagious and not everyone infected with the disease shows symptoms. When a student wears a face covering, though, it is more difficult for the student to spread COVID-19 to friends and classmates. And because we don't always know who has COVID-19, it is safest for all of us if everyone wears a cloth face covering. We wear face coverings to help protect our friends and classmates, and in case we are infected but do not, do not know it. Face coverings are effective only if worn properly. Students should take the following steps each time they put on their face covering. Wash your hands before putting on your face covering. Place a face covering over your nose and mouth and secure it under your chin. Try to fit the face covering snug against the sides of your face. Make sure you can breathe easily. While wearing your face covering, do not touch it with your hands. If you accidentally touch your face covering, wash your hands right away. If you ever need to remove your face covering, you should handle it by only the ear loops or ties. And be very careful not to touch your eyes, nose, or mouth. Wash your hands right away afterwards. Beyond wearing face coverings, all students are expected to continue taking everyday actions to reduce the spread of COVID-19 as set forth in the district's reopening plan, such as staying home when sick, social distancing when possible, appropriately covering coughs and sneezes, and frequently washing hands with soap and water, consistent with the guidance by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention.
Hello and welcome back class of 2021, class of 2022, class of 2023, and class of 2024. My name is Hope Cantrell, one of the assistant principals here at the high school, and I am responsible for students with the last name of E through L, although I'm happy to see and talk with any student regardless if you're in my alphabet or not. This morning, I am going to be talking to you about our new bell schedule, class transitions, social distance dots, lockers, and directional staircases. The bell schedule has been altered this year to help with class transitions, i.e. class changes, to help decrease the amount of students in the hallway during major transition periods to provide for the safest transition time as possible. Major transition times, meaning between mod two and three, or between mod four and five, will be six minutes to allow for a gradual release of students into the hallways. There will be two transition teams, classrooms that are A and classrooms that are deemed B. Classroom personnel that are designated as A will release their students as the bell rings. Classroom personnel that are designated as B will release their students halfway through the six minute class change. So if you are in a classroom that is A, you will have minutes one, two, and three of our six minute transitional time to change your class. If you are B, you will have minutes four, five, and six to get to your next classroom. Social distance spacers will line the hallways for students to stand on if they reach their next class and the teacher has not dismissed his or her class yet. Please make sure that if you are waiting, you are not clogging up the hallway and you are standing on these spacers. Let's talk about lockers for a moment. Students, you will be permitted to use your lockers at the beginning and at the end of the school day only. This is to help expedite hallway transition times, help keep the hallways clear from students standing and or kneeling at their locker during class changes, and to help promote social distancing guidelines to the best of our abilities. A majority of courses have online versions of their textbook and or classroom sets. As a result, students should have limited books to carry with them throughout the day. Lockers will be assigned to students based upon their final class of the instructional day in an effort to help expedite departure at the end of the school day. As you are transitioning around the building, please make sure that you adhere to all of the visual cues around the building as well as the directional staircases. Let's talk temperature checks. A temperature check should be done prior to leaving home. If you have a temperature of 100 or above, you should be at home. After arriving at school, teachers will take your temperature during Mod 1 with a non-contact thermometer. This should be a quick process. If your temperature reading is 100 or above, you will be sent home. It is important that we adhere to this in order to try our best to ensure that everyone who is in the building is healthy. Water bottle filler stations. Throughout the building, you will notice that there have been installed water bottle filler stations. This year, we will not be using the regular water fountains in order to stop the spread of germs. Please remember that while you are permitted to have water with you, it must be a clear, closable container. Any other containers are not permissible and no other drinks are permissible. This year, we will be using a program called eHall Pass. We will no longer be using paper passes throughout the school day. Instead, we will be using eHall Passes. E-Hall Pass is an electronic program that will allow you to create passes when needed. Teachers will train you on how to use E-Hall Pass, but it is a very simple process. When you need to go somewhere in the building, you will create a pass and the teacher will approve you to go. There will be a limit to the amount of students who will be able to be in each area, so there may be a time when you are declined for that reason, but will be able to try again in a few minutes when the area is clear. During instances when you are needed somewhere in the building, whether it is for a doctor's appointment, a counselor needs to see you, or an administrator needs to see you, through this program you will be notified of that as well. As already mentioned, Teachers will be training you soon on this program if it hasn't happened already.
Welcome to eHall Pass. This video is for students and will provide a quick overview of the eHall Pass system. Let's start by logging in. Here I'm showing you the basic URL for eHall Pass. Your school may give you a different URL or link in order to log into the system. You may be directed to use Google, Office 365, Clever, or ClassLink school-related credentials. Please follow the instructions given to you from your school administrators. Once you've logged into eHall Pass, you will see the main student screen. There are menu options on the left. The main screen used to create new hall passes is in the center, and in the top right is your profile. You will only need to go into your profile if your school instructs you to do so. For purposes of adding cell information, for text alerts, and or creating a kiosk password. From the main screen, you can create a new pass request. This is done by selecting an option in the Where Are You section. Here you can search for your teacher's name or the location you are leaving, and if desired, you can create up to 10 shortcuts by clicking on the Favorites box and searching for the teacher or location you want to add. Click the check mark and choose Select. You can go back in and remove favorites as needed. Once a selection is made to indicate where are you, then search or select a favorite in the where do you want to go section. There may be shortcuts here that your school administrator has set up. You can add up to five shortcuts of your own by clicking the right arrow and searching to add the teacher or location. After making your selection in this area, you may need to add a reason for the pass. For some passes, this may be required, but for other pass types, it may be optional or may not appear at all. Then click Create Pass. At this point, your pass will show red on your screen and is awaiting approval from your teacher. Please follow the instructions at your school for asking permission to leave the room on a pass. The teacher has the option to approve the pass from their own eHall Pass dashboard or can approve the pass directly on your device. The teacher could also decide not to approve the pass and cancel this if necessary. Once the teacher approves the pass, the pass will turn green on your screen. At this point, follow the guidelines at your school for leaving the classroom with an approved pass. Upon return or arrival at your destination, depending on the type of pass, follow the procedures to get your pass approved or, approved or ended. Depending on the type of pass or destination, you may need two or possibly up to four approvals on a pass. Your school and some teachers may choose to use a feature called AutoPass for some types of passes. With AutoPass, you may be able to start and or end the pass on your own. You can recognize an AutoPass because you'll see a play and stop button on the pass as shown here. Again, this is an optional feature and not all schools or teachers choose to use this. There are some pass limits that can be set by a school administrator. If your school chooses to use any of these, you will see messages at the top of your pass screen in eHall Pass. Most are self-explanatory, but if you have any questions about these, please ask a teacher or an administrator at your school. Lastly, your school might choose to use the appointment pass feature. This means a teacher or administrator could set up a pass for you to attend a meeting or appointment with them. This could be an immediate pass or for a future date and time. You can see if you have any appointment passes from the Appointment Pass menu option on the left. Typically, you will receive reminder notifications about an appointment pass approximately 20 minutes and 5 minutes prior to the appointment time. These notifications will be within eHall Pass, via email, and possibly via text, depending on your school's guidelines. Please acknowledge these notifications to let your teacher know you are planning to attend the appointment. At the appointment time, your teacher will need to approve the appointment pass just like any other pass. If you have questions or want to learn more about using eHall Pass, there are other training videos and a quick reference guide available to you from the training menu option in eHall Pass. Thank you. Hand
washing is one of the most important ways you can keep from getting sick and spreading germs to others. Dirty hands spread disease. This hand washing demonstration will show you how hand washing can get rid of germs and chemicals that get on our hands every day. This gel is like the germs and chemicals that we get from things we touch throughout the day, like our toys and pets. If we then rub our eyes, nose, or mouth, or pick up something to eat, the germs or chemicals can get into our bodies and make us sick. Studies have shown that people touch their eyes, nose, and mouth about 25 times every hour without even realizing it. To get rid of these germs and chemicals, CDC recommends you follow these easy steps every time you wash your hands. Wet, lather, scrub, rinse, and dry. We're going to show you the right way to do each step. First, wet your hands with clean running water. Turn off the tap and apply soap. Then, lather your hands by rubbing them together with the soap. Be sure to lather the backs of your hands between your fingers and under your nails. Scrub your hands for at least 20 seconds. If you don't have a clock nearby, keep scrubbing until you've sung the happy birthday song twice. Rinse your hands well under clean running water. Dry your hands using a clean towel, electric hand dryer, or air dry them. Washing your hands using the steps we just demonstrated is very important to get hands completely clean. Let's see how well we got rid of the germs and chemicals. Great, no more germs and chemicals. Why is this so important? Germs and chemicals from unwashed hands can get into our foods and drinks when they're being prepared or when we're eating or drinking them, which can make us sick. Also, germs and chemicals from unwashed hands can be transferred to other objects like cell phones, tabletops, or toys, and then transferred to other people's hands. That's why it's so important to wash your hands following these steps. Wet, lather, scrub, rinse, and dry so you can stay healthy and help keep those around you healthy. For more information, visit cdc.gov forward slash hand washing. As a reminder, our cell phone policy, as in previous years, is still in place. Cell phones must be turned off or placed on silent or vibrant mode and out of sight. They can be kept in your locker, on your person, in your pocket. If you need to use a phone, report to the office. If parents need to get a hold of you or in contact with you, they can call the office and we will relay the message. Cell phones are not to be visible from 7.30 until 2.15. Earbuds may be used in study hall if plugged in the into the school-issued computer and used for classroom assignments only. No Bluetooth headphones are permissible. This is a privilege and may be taken away. Dress code. Now I'm going to go over some common dress code issues that we see. Shorts, dresses, skirts must be past fingertip length in its entirety. Clothes must be free from holes, rips, tears, tight yoga pants, leggings, etc. must have an overshirt past fingertip length, again, in its entirety. Sleepwear, pajamas, slippers are not permitted. Hair must be a natural shade and out of the face and eyes. Hi, this is Mrs. Fisher. I'm going to talk to you about attendance real quick. Uh, if you are absent, your parent needs to call the attendance office on the day you're going to be absent uh, to let us know, but also to write a note on the day of return. Upon returning from school to, from an illness, please bring in a note from a parent or guardian to the attendance office before reporting to your first mod class. Unexcused absences will result in a zero grade, including tests and quizzes. So make sure that you have an excuse for your absence. If you need to be dismissed from school early for an appointment, please bring a note from your parent or guardian to the attendance office before the start of school. They will issue you an e-pass for the appropriate time to leave. Uh, when returning to school, you will need a medical note from the doctor's office they will issue you some kind of uh, note saying that you were there and what time. Uh, we will not be issuing paper passes for the doctors to sign this year. 
All notes regarding your attendance should be brought to the attendance office prior to the start of Mod 1. A student must be in attendance for half the school day, which is three hours and 20 minutes, if you would like to participate in Perry after school activities. So that's clubs, sports, games, anything. Uh, students have five family vacation days that do not count against their attendance or their hourly total. Uh, parents and guardians must come into the school in order to fill out that form. So if you have any more questions, you can reach out to myself or any of the assistant principals, as well as the other dean, Mr. Kagey. Welcome to the start of the 2020-21 school year. It's great to have all of you back. Um, this is the voice of Mrs. Bowersox, one of the counselors at the Perry High School Counseling Office. Um, just look at the top of the slide. You can see who the counselors are, Mrs. Ebert, Mrs. Krim, Mr. Lautenslager, Mrs. Miller, and myself, Mrs. Bowersox. Just a couple of important things for you to remember. When you're looking at that schedule, you have until August 28th to drop a course. Um, you will be able to get a drop form from the website and also from the counseling office. We will have a stack of them on the table that sits outside our office and then you can drop them off um, once they have been signed by the teacher and by a parent. Just remember this, you cannot fall below six credits for the year. So you cannot drop a class if it's going to take you under six credits. And you can only add a class second semester and we will not be doing that um, for a couple of weeks until things settle down. If you're taking a CCP course, you have 14 calendar days to turn in a CCP drop form. That 14th day is September 2nd, and those forms are due to the counseling office by 2.30. Your CCP teacher does have drop forms available and can sign them for you and give them to you so that you can get them to the counseling office. Hey, just make sure you look at that schedule, hopefully that you're holding. Make sure there's no holes. Make sure that you have 18 mods. Make sure that you have all your core classes and that you have six credits. Athletes, you need at least five half credit classes for each nine weeks, the nine weeks prior to your sport and then the nine weeks where you are actually participating in the sport. If you want to see your counselor two ways, you can do it with that e-pass or you can also click on the icon that is on your school issued computer desktop that will come to us and then we will call you through ePass. Um, just some of the things that the counseling services um, provide to you, the student, besides scheduling and dropping and adding, of course, is we have grief groups. We have a smart lab if you have to calm yourself down, if you're too stressed out. There is a care team that comes together if you have any needs or if you know someone that has needs, um, please, send your counselor an email and give them the name of the person or give them your name if you're that person because we have lots of resources in the community to help you and your family. We're here for those immediate needs that you might have, stress, anxiety, bullying, um, just don't know what to do, lots of questions, planning your future, what kind of classes you're taking, where you should go to college. That's what we're here for. We're here to help you. However, if you have more deeper needs of counseling and you need to see a clinical counselor on a weekly basis, then we can also help you with that by getting you the forms that you need to sign um, and complete. And we do have clinical counselors here at the high school that can see you. So what we want to do is make sure that you have a good year, that you are supported and that you don't feel alone. This is gonna be a great year because we're all gonna to work together as a team. All right, go Perry. Just to wrap up this presentation, you've heard quite a bit about the changes that are in place as we open up this school year. As I said at the beginning of the video, you are not going to like some of the new procedures and policies. After many discussions, we needed to make these difficult decisions. Since we're in the midst of a global pandemic, they needed to happen, and they were made with everyone's health and safety in mind. Honestly, you may have listened to for the past several minutes and felt disappointed that things are not the same as they were when we, we began school a year ago. You may feel angry, frustrated, confused, or overwhelmed. On the flip side, you may feel grateful, happy, and accepting. 
We are in unprecedented times, challenging times, uncomfortable times. We are all in this together and will certainly be tested in the coming weeks. How we respond as a school, students, and staff alike will eventually lead to our safety and success. I have a tremendous amount of confidence and faith in the student body at Perry High School that each of you will do your part to ensure our success and be considerate of the health of one another throughout the entire year. With all of these changes, your health, my health, and the health of everyone else in the building is very important. We all should be able to understand some inconveniences will lead to uncomfortableness, yet if it will help us all do our part to be successful this school year, then that is what is needed to occur. If you're in school right now, you have chosen the traditional model as opposed to the virtual learning academy model. I hope you made this decision based on your own situation and taking the health of you, your family, classmates, and high school staff into consideration. If you chose the traditional format because you thought it was going to be the same as it was when school opened last year, then you are not correct with your thinking. Also, if at any point we need to transition to a temporary remote learning format, it too will look quite different from what occurred in the spring of last school year. Here are just a few of the main points and differences. A traditional school day will be used throughout through the Google Classroom and Google Meet technology programs. The student day will run from 7.30 a.m., the Mod 1 class, through 2.15 p.m., the end of the school day. You will be given Google Classroom codes to join each of your classes with the expectation that you will be in attendance at each class. Essentially, you will follow the traditional bell schedule moving from one class to another throughout the entire school day. It will be like you're in a brick and mortar school yet we'll be doing all of it online. Assignments given by teachers will have specific dates to be due, just like they would if you were physically sitting in their classroom. The grading scale will not be adjusted if we move into a temporary remote learning setting. In the spring, there were adjustments made, yet moving ahead, we will follow our standard grading scale. Yes, many aspects of our school will be different than last year much of it based on the health and safety of everyone. These changes are challenging for all of us, and I have a tremendous amount of trust in each of you that you will do your part so we can be successful. Please be sure to follow all of the guidelines every minute of every day, as each other's health and that of our families and friends is placed at the top of all that we do. As I said in my opening, I'm counting on each one of you to do your part, to show the compassion and kindness that is needed at these difficult times. You are all leaders. You lead our school and district through thoughtfulness, acts of kindness, and feelings of compassion. Please join me in embracing these challenges, the differences, the new procedures, and rise up to do your part. We all need one another, and together we can overcome any obstacle thrown our way. Thanks for understanding.